Welcome to Crafty Hints. I'm Chantel. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day today to join me. I do hope today's video inspires you a bit and you'll hit that like and subscribe and even hit the bell so you know when I upload new videos. You did what with Dollar Tree items? I'm doing this collab with Jackie from Crafting in Mimi's World. Jackie has a fabulous channel that you're going to have to go visit. Now together, we're going to be doing seven items. We both chose three items. She chose tumbling tower blocks, a frame or shadow box and twine, and I chose a pizza pan, tissue paper, and a wood cube drawer box. And together, we chose a serving tray. Let's get to DIY one where I use a cube box and tissue paper. For this project, I took one of these cubes from the Dollar Tree. It has the little drawer, so there's two pieces there, and one of the little trays from the Dollar Tree. They're all wood, and I gave those a nice coat with the Waverly White chalk paint. Next, I'm taking some Mod Podge and going over the front of this. I think I could have used just a little bit less and it would have given me a smoother finish. Again, love this tissue paper. All right, and we're just going to go all the way around the outside of the tray. And once it was completely dry, I took a little fan brush so it'd have a little bit less Mod Podge and went over the top of it. Once that was completely dry, I took this file and just went in a downward motion. That seemed to work the best. Oh, had to get that sticker off. And just continue that way to get all of that excess tissue paper off. It's the easiest way so you don't have to cut exactly and you don't have any little funny edges. So you just take it all the way around. Next, I took this, oh goodness, which green was it from Waverly? It's uh, one of the darker greens from Waverly. And I decided to go over the edge of the two little cubes and the top of the tray. Just to give it a more finished look. Next, I'm going to glue those two cubes together. Now remember, this is a drawer, so one smaller than the other. And I didn't need to fully paint those areas because wood glue adheres better to just wood with nothing else on it. Gave it a little bit of hot glue for that instant hold. And I apologize, my hot glue is a little bit dark. Um, I might have left that on all night. So the glue might have gotten a little bit dark and I squeezed out a bunch of it but this gave it a nice good hold. It didn't have an issue there. I see now that the top of my box needed a little bit of paint because I was thinking it would be covered. And so just do a little bit of touch up paint here and add a little bit of hot glue here and take some ribbon along this edge. We're just giving it a nice finished look. And I went all the way around the edge of the tray. And I think this would be good enough, but I've decided to put some feet on the bottom. So I took a skewer and I just took some low temp hot glue and I put it at the end so that they wouldn't roll off. Now I'm just going to paint these beads real quick with some Waverly chalk paint and then set them aside to dry. Next, I took this beaded ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go around the top of those cubes. I just thought, gosh, it's missing something and this would give it a little bit of texture. So I'm just taking that around the cubes, giving a little bit of hot glue and my hot glue starting to get clear again. So that's a good thing, especially with these little beads. And then I realized that the taller cube would have a couple rows less than the smaller. 
So I just cut a few rows of this after I measured once around because it needed one more row of these beads. So I just went around those three edges and that was perfect. It was as easy as that to give it a nice finished look. You do want to look at the Dollar Tree when you go now and then. They have some neat different tissue papers or, you know, party supply stores. But, you know, you get one to fit your decor or for that special someone you want to make a gift for. This would be good for Father's Day also. They have like a more um, plaid one and some, you know, different prints that might suit other people just a little bit better. All right, I think we have all of those. And these are my paint pens. For this project, my main two items are this pizza pan and this placemat. Both are from the Dollar Tree. They have another one that might be nice for this project that says Home Sweet Home. It's kind of a black and cream color, I think. But I really like the colors of this and thought it was pretty. So I took my half beads again I got those from Amazon and of course I will link those down below in case you decide you would like them as well so I just go all the way around and then I'm going to take my ivory chalk paint and I don't need to go all the way in because I you know of course we'll put that placemat in the middle so I went all over this and covered everything that would show And I also used a couple different um, grays. I think one was steel and uh, I think the other one's silver lining. And just used those to give it a little bit of a distressed look. Took a little bit of hot glue and pressed this down. Use the slightest little bit, you know, make sure and just, um, you don't want to clump that up because it will melt the placemat number one number two you'd be able to see you know any bumps so be careful this is the thinner of the two white nautical ropes from the dollar tree and i'm just hot gluing that and going all the way around I took this lamb's ear. It's from the Dollar Tree. Normally I just pull the leaves off, but I kind of liked this bunch. The little smaller branch I had and the top of this bunch, I think will be perfect for each side up at the top. I do apologize. I see now that this is a little bit out of frame. I took this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby. I get the ribbon like this when it's half off. Oh, I'll show you the tip in just a second on the next loop. It's an easy way to find the middle of the ribbon. So go around in a circle. Once you cut it and adhere it, I'll show you how to find the center. So once I attach the two of these, you'll see I just pull the loop that way and I take the wire and it gets it perfectly then in the center. And I'll do it one more time on the third one. I think it's a habit now. A loop, pull it, it finds the center and then I just squish them together. I made a tiny little loop for the center of my bow. And now I just want the tails of my bow. And I will just stack them all up, put that on the back. And I decided this time to use a zip strip and or a zip tie. 
and I just pull this all together and there you are. It's as easy as that. Oh, it needed one more leaf, I guess. And that will just sit right up at the top, right on top of those two pieces of lamb's ear. So I attach that up at the top very simply. I'm sorry, you can't see it. It's just a little bit of hot glue. I'm pressing it on there. And then I'll just decide how long I want the tails here. And I do notice later that I cut these in the same direction. These are both, yeah. But if you use a flame at the end of this, then they won't fray. Just a tiny bit works. I will have to go clip that other tail. It's going to drive me nuts. All right, I got this. Um, oh, it's a wired little floral thing. Floral garland, I think it was called. And I do take one of the pieces apart because I want three at the top and three with the bottom bunches. Just took off one of those little pearl things and glued it at the top. I thought it just gave it a little bit more of like a floral feel. And if you look, it kind of looks like the ones on the sides of the sign. So I thought that would be a cute accent. I found this at the Dollar Tree also. I haven't seen any within the last month or so, but I do believe it is also at Hobby Lobby. So I'm just gluing those in place. Again, I apologize that I'm out of frame. And I just put a little loop on the back with some twine and putting a little piece of ribbon over the top of that and a good amount of glue and press that all down just making sure it will hold it's been hanging on my wall for a week or two now and it's just fine so there you are you can see the top <laughs> i'm so sorry you couldn't before For this one, we're going to use some of the tumbling tower blocks. And I decided to use different grain looking ones. And I'm using some Gorilla Wood glue in between each of those blocks and pressing them together. As you can see, they have the grain going in a little bit different directions. And I kind of liked the look of that. So just pressing those together, making sure they adhere. And now these, I'm flipping the other way and gluing those. Now I have the grain going the same way there, but I'm using some of the darker brown ones that come in some of the tumbling towers. I didn't have as many of those, so I used them more sparingly. And I'm just getting enough so that it'll match up with the row above it. So I had three blocks going across. And I have two, four, six, eight, nine, I think. Two, four, six, eight. Yes, nine. I'm so sorry. I should have counted that before. So I have nine. So it goes three the long way, nine standing up. And I'm making a tray here. So you'll just want to decide how long you want your tray. And if you do use this um, square, it will help you line up your blocks a little bit. So I was pressing those down on there also. And now I'm just making sure I have this and that will make the bottom there. And I started to make one more row, but that was going to be too much. So I went, once they start, they were pretty dry, I flipped it over and I did that all on that silicone mat because the glue comes right off. After that back dried, I took this ribbon from the Dollar Tree, 
Those tumbling tower blocks were also in the kids' area where the games and puzzles are. And I'm just taking this ribbon and going around the edge to give it a little bit of detail, a little bit of texture, but also a little bit more of a finished look. Then I took these two different sizes of beads. Now I had stained those with a little bit of antique wax for another project and had extras, so I thought it would be perfect. So I do um, one medium sized bead and one little bit smaller bead to make the feet for my tray. Probably could have gone with an even bigger big bead, um, but I've used a lot of those lately and I have a lot of these left. So I went with these, plus they worked well when I doubled them up. So a little bit of hot glue and just pressed those in there. I did small bead down. I didn't use the wood glue just because they did have a finish on there and the other already has the wood glue so I wasn't sure if it would adhere as well. Usually wood glue bonds chemically with unfinished wood to unfinished wood. And here that is. And it works perfectly with my coaster. Isn't that fun? You could put whatever you wanted on here. Just a reminder to visit Jackie's channel at Crafting in Mimi's World. I will have a link down below, but you don't want to miss out on all the great things she's creating. All right, let's get to the next DIY. For this project, I started out with this frame from the Dollar Tree, and I am just going to paint over this Hello Love. I do think that this was cute, but I needed a frame. So I am just going to go over this with Waverly White Chalk Paint. If anybody has a tip on how your chalk paint doesn't start to get a little bit too thick, let me know. Mine started to get a little bit thick, but I'm going to embrace it and go over this frame a few times to kind of give it a distressed look. So just as your chalk paint starts to set, go back over it with your brush and it'll give it that look like you've painted it with several different colors and several different layers. Next, I took this tissue paper. You may have seen it in another project or two. I do love it. So I took this and I'm attaching it to a piece of cardstock. You could definitely use just printer paper. And I ran it through my inkjet printer and I printed Simply Blessed. And I just put a little square around it so that I knew exactly where to cut. This frame was well, the whole frame was about six and a half, so to be safe, I just went ahead and cut it at that and then remeasured. Next, I took my Elmer's Extra Strength Craft Glue and just went over this piece of cardstock. Originally, I was going to Mod Podge it to that back piece, and that's why I painted it. So if you have one that didn't have that bracket on the back that kind of gave it a bump, you could go ahead and Mod Podge that on, and that would give it a nice effect as well. But to make up for that, I decided to go ahead and just attach it to the back. Because that's what we do as crafters. We adapt, we overcome, and we remake things. So here we are. Just that easy to attach it. And then I just pop it back into the frame. And you could definitely leave it just like this. I decided since the greenery is so pretty on this tissue paper, again, I got that from the Dollar Tree in their gift wrap section, but I thought that to enhance that, I want to take a little bit of my own greenery and just keep trimming here and there until you have it exactly the way you like it. 
Next, I took some ribbon and I just wrapped it around the center of the two sides of the greenery. Just glued that down. Again, if you wanted to make this, you know, a swag with flowers, you can make this however you want. But it's yours and I want you to make it just the way you want it. I do think that this would be pretty without anything on the bottom, but gosh, I do like just a little hint of that greenery. Next, I wanted to add just a little bow here. And this ribbon is a little bit thick, so I'll fold it in half and make a bow. And I'll make it just a smaller kind of daintier bow, but the polka dots just in the middle of that greenery there didn't look quite right. So we add a little bit of bow and just to enhance that just a little bit. A little bit of glue to fold that ribbon over. I do hope if you've been enjoying all of these DIYs that you will join us. Have a little bit of fun with us. I can't wait to see what comments you might have. How would you have done this different? All right, we are about set. We'll give this a little bit of hot glue there in the center. Next item to craft with is that twine. So I decided to make some coasters. I took that Dollar Tree cork and it has adhesive on the back. So I took a bowl and traced around it and made four circles so that I could make four coasters. I just cut those out. And it isn't too thick, but just thick enough to give a nice base for our coaster. All right, to cut this one, I just fold it in half. I realize since it isn't so thick, I could cut two at once. Very easy. I thought this was a good size for a coaster. So I took off the back to the adhesive, but I started with a little bit of hot glue. I just got that going and kept it's really sticky. This cork is super sticky so I put back down the label and also tried it a little bit on this mat in case I needed to um, actually for when I do the glue at the end. Now the neat thing about these silicone mats is the paint scrubs right off. So if you see my blue mat out, I'm going to be using extra glue or I will be painting because you can just take um, basically a washcloth and just rub it right off of these silicone mats. I got mine at Amazon. I'll link it down below if you decide that you want one. I just felt like I used so much um, wax paper or butcher paper. So I just kept going around in a circle. Every once in a while I would add a little bit of hot glue. That sticky um, adhesive from the cork is pretty good, but I wanted to make sure that this will stay. So kept going around and I'm getting towards the end of it and getting to that edge. I don't think I was perfectly center. So, you know, you might want to find center a little bit better than I did, but I was pretty close. I had just a little bit. I think part of it is also if you get the twine more flat, it'll be a little wider on some sides. And if you have it pushed up against the other edge, then it's going to be a little bit thinner. So just depending how you hold it. 
So especially around the last edge, I got some glue and I just kept going around and I wanted to make sure it was sealed really well. And then I trimmed off the extra cork. Isn't that cute? What another neat way to use twine. I did take my heat gun and any little extra glue that might be showing, I just took that off. Kind of a little bit of a boho vibe to it, but also a little bit of farmhouse. So I think this would fit in several decors. Here it is. And it's perfect for my lemonade. I finally found one of these trays. Yay! I really wanted to one of these. I think they are so cute. So when I saw this, I knew what I wanted to do right off. I've got those half beads that I bought on Amazon and I'm just going to adhere them to the side and I'm going to actually keep it an ivory color but I think I might also do one of these with a wood grain look to it. But it's really easy to use just a little bit of hot glue and press these on. And I just kept going all the way down. And as you get a little bit of glue strings, you know, just try to take those off. Because when you do paint, they will show up. So be careful of that. And I just wiped off any of those. I went ahead and went with my Waverly Ivory Chalk Paint. I really like this. It's not such a stark white. It gives you a little bit of that country feel. I'm sorry for the glare from my lights there. Now I'm going just to the rim of this. I just want that edge. And you'll see why. Well, one reason why is if I do decide I want to put food right on this tray, I'm okay. It's not painted. It still has a plastic. Now, I'd probably put a doily down or wax paper, something like that under your food item. But, you know, it wouldn't be necessary if I want to just put cookies on there. I could. Um, so, I've got another idea, though for another idea or two that we could use this. So I just made sure to cover that and then I used one of these pillar candle holders from the Dollar Tree as well. I gave this a coat of the ivory and I'm not being all perfect and precise. I wanted it to give it a little bit of a wood feel like I did with the, you know, because of the wood beads. I added some Gorilla Glue there and now a little bit of hot glue. The hot glue will give me that instant hold. That Gorilla Glue will hang on for dear life. So I just held this in place for a little bit and flipped it over. Press it down just a little bit more in case I jarred it. And, of course, I have been in love with the lemons. So I used a lemon plate and I put some muffins on there. Isn't that nice? You can change out the plate then to match whatever theme you have going on. Oh, such a pretty country feel to it. Those were fun to make. Thank you so much for watching. Please go visit Jackie and let her know that I sent you. Stick a little lemon on there and I will let her know that any comment over there with a lemon is probably someone that came over from my channel. And if you came from Jackie's channel, thank you so much for visiting.